Welcome to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do. And do tech good. Good. (laughs) We're doing tech good. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we want to thank our sponsor who's been helping us out all year. We have Pantheon.io. Thank you so much, Pantheon. If you don't know them, they are a platform for WordPress, for Drupal 7, Drupal 8. They provide a dev, test, and live environment. So it's easy to push stuff up, test it, make sure everything jives right before you push it to your live environment. They have phenomenal support. It's a really great product. And uh, I mean, if you ask these guys nicely, I'm sure they would even write your code for you. They're, they're that good. So <laughs> Well, Check them out at pantheon.io. Tell them Frederick sent you. Back to you, Brian. <laughs> yeah, and if uh, this is your first time listening, well, you're in for a treat, and you should go check out our YouTube channel because we have hundreds of videos on there covering conferences, talking to some really awesome, cool people like our guest today. And you should go there, subscribe, click that little bell icon to notify you, and then go to your podcast player of choice and make sure to leave a review there and subscribe there. And uh, Well, we're glad to have you listening. Yeah, really appreciate everyone joining us today. And let's go ahead with that being said, get to our guest. We have an amazing guest. Let me read all these wonderful things correctly. We have front end developer, View Vixen, North Carolina chapter leader, community organizer, board certified assistant behavioral analyst, speaker maria lamardo welcome to the show maria hi guys how's it going you didn't roll the r try the again <laughs> try lamardo. There lamardo. You go. <laughs> lamardo. perfect no. i'm gonna expect uh, you. you to do that every time now <laughs> my pleasure lamardo. <laughs> so maria where are you joining us from today rally north carolina <laughs> Uh, there, as we said. Great. So are you actually from North Carolina or did you come there from somewhere else? I'm actually from Caracas, Venezuela, and I came to the States when I was a teenager. Uh, oh, that's cool. Why'd you come to the States? My parents, they got a job to the, in the United States. So we just, you know, as kids do, followed along. <laughs> you know, I love North Carolina, though. That It's so beautiful up there. We go camping and hiking up there all the time mountains or the blue ridge blue blue ridge trail and everything oh yeah it's really nice here at your rally you said yeah it's like three hours from the mountains nice do you get out there oh my gosh any time any long weekend i have i try to make it out there awesome so did, so you're from venezuela venezuela uh <laughs> where did you actually grow up in, in the u.s um, well, so I went, we all went to South Florida um, and I was there for like 10 years, a little bit over. And it was really nice. I, I went to school there, FIU. Woo. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and then my husband um, got a job in North Carolina. So we blindly moved here and luckily Ooh. really, really liked it. So <laughs> we lucked oh, out. That's so cool. Uh, when, when did you actually move there then? How long have you been in North Carolina? Uh, five years. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. My uh, one of my best friends lives up there and we went to visit and just, yeah, I, I love that area. The weather's perfect all year long, at least in my point of view, because I do not like the heat and it is. Oh, nice. Yeah. And the people are great. <laughs> yeah. The people are great. Yeah. I'm i uh, I'm a little envious and jealous. So I think it would uh, be really cool if we, before we jump into some of the main topics of web accessibility to get a little con- more context about you because your story is so interesting. And I, I know you probably told it a few different times, but I, I, it's, it's interesting to me that the fact that you came from this background of a behavioral analyst, and then you had a situation where you were stuck in bed and uh, for health reasons, and you were looking for a different career path, and you kind of found something that's in between a really good hybrid of the two. Do, do you mind talking about that a little bit and sharing that with us? Sure. So um, 
for those of you who've never heard like of applied behavior analysis, it's a scientific discipline which uses therapy to change specific behaviors in a significant way. So um, for example, I had clients who like uh, couldn't communicate verbally. Um, and then within five months, they were communicating in complete sentences and um, being able to go out in the community and things like that. So it was like, I, I was very passionate about that job. And honestly, like it couldn't, there could not have been a better job for me to do. Um, and about two years ago, I got very sick. Um, it all happened randomly. I hadn't, it's not a condition that I had for years or anything like that. Um, and then in like the course of a month, I couldn't walk anymore and I was in bed and no doctor could tell me what was wrong with me. And it took about six months to diagnose until I could get on the correct treatments and, you know, feel a lot better. And during that time, the six months of un not knowing, um, my husband is a backend developer. So he kind of introduced me to the world of programming since I could do that from bed. <laughs> and I actually really liked it. Um, I enrolled in a Udacity nano degree and I really enjoyed it. And then, you know, after I received the diagnosis um, and it wasn't very good and it was pretty much, I couldn't go back to my previous field. Um, I decided to kind of continue down this path that I had started and then, you know, one thing led to another and then I discovered about web accessibility and I was like, oh my gosh, like how lucky is this? This is like meant to be, this is mine. <laughs> um, so then I got really into that and then um, started going, uh, growing my community a lot. I actually founded um, a developers group in the area uh, where we do uh, weekly study sessions and monthly meetup events where we talk all things tech. <laughs> And it's been and really good. What nano degree did you uh, do just out of curiosity? Oh, yeah. So um, it, I did the front end nano degree. And then I got the Google scholarship for a mobile web specialist. Mm -hmm. And then there was like a data science one for Bre the Metro Betelsman scholarship. Nice. What was it? What really got you, I guess, really piqued your interest when you were doing it, when you're, when you started, you get, you started the nano degree program, but what was like, whoa, I like this a lot. Um, well, I think for me also, I was, uh, I have always been very like, um, I, I really liked having a project to do and like, um, like I, I like to crochet and knit. Um, and then I just like kind of building on something that then you could kind of see and like be like oh wow I made this and I remember like when I was first learning how to program and I was kind of more on the front end side of things and I would you know spend time on something and then it progressively got better and better and at the end not that there's ever an end to a project but you know it kind of came together and then it's like oh wow like I, I made this so it was like you know an easier way of like having multiple projects all at once and um, it just kind of it became like a creative outlet as well. Do you still have that same sense of reward that you had from your previous career? Do you have that fulfillment now as well, since you've been able to find the path that matches your passion so well? That's a really hard question because I feel like before I had more of like a one-on-one -on -one impact um, into people's lives. And I, I absolutely right. love that. Like, I feel like there's no words to explain like how the, fulfilling that was um, and now it's a little bit different because like uh, I guess the outcomes are a little bit detached and even people that I might never meet you know um, so I, I feel like it's 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 a my way to kind of still kind of cater to that community um, but you know it's not as immediate um, and but but I guess um, I have found that passion and like I feel like what keeps me going a lot is um, my community and like just growing my community and I feel like I I have been able to kind of make a difference there and like I just it, it that gives me a lot of fulfillment as well. Do you get to experience that day to day at your position where you're working at currently or is it more of a thing that you kind of explore if you will within travel, speaking at conferences, and reaching out to the community? 
So it's not part of my job description, <laughs> though my work is very um, supportive in things that I do. Um, like, you know, they give me the time to travel and do conferences and um, they let me use their space whenever I have events. Um, so they're very supportive. They actually sponsored my last event where we did a Dev Fest and a Dev Set RTP on conference. Um, so they're more than supportive, but definitely it's something that I seek out of, outside of like work hours and you know, a lot of my personal time is taken by this, which is I absolutely love. Yeah, and, and uh, you also, I, I'd, I'd like to touch on too, you run a view vit, the View Vixen chapter, or your leader as in North Carolina too. I'm a, a huge fan of the View Vixens. Do you want to talk briefly about that before we get into our topic? Um, yeah, so working with View Vixens has been really really fun. <laughs> um, I've worked with uh, Jen Looper, who's um, our CEO, and then uh, Diana Rodriguez has, yeah, <laughs> she's awesome. Her uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Diana Rodriguez has actually moved into town, um, and she's like the worldwide organizer for View Vixen, so she's oh, wow. amazing. Um, so her, her and I actually put this past event together. Um, so it's been really good to be kind of in touch with the community and and feel like I'm having a different, making a difference in like, um, I guess, opening the door for more women in tech. And um, I'll actually be doing a couple of View Vixens workshop, one for All Things Open, which is a local um, conference here in Raleigh, um, then Connect Tech, and then in View London. Where were you when you first became aware of View Vixens? Yeah, so um, as soon as I finished all the nano degrees, I um, went to Red Hat for an internship. Then right out of that internship, I went to Nutanix and Nutanix was like, oh, hey, uh, front end developer, um, choose a framework and just learn it and <laughs> put it up in all of our projects. And I was like, yep, yeah, okay. Um, so I went to this All Things Open conference last year and um, I just took up every view topic that they had in their schedule. And one of them happened to be the View Vixens workshop. And um, luckily I happened to meet Diana and Jen at this conference. And I told them how like, I really enjoyed working with the community and how I was really passionate about just learning and teaching. And like, I just wanted to grow a community where we were just all doing that together. Um, and then I was like, hey, do you guys happen to have a chapter here? Because I would love to just do everything I can do to support that. Oh, I love that. <laughs> And how, how can people find out more about View Vixens? What's what's the URL just for our audio listeners? Obviously, we'll have a link in the show notes for everyone. I believe it's viewvixens.org. And we also have a list of all of our workshops there. And oh, they're all, all free to attend for women or those who identify as such. That's awesome. And that, that, that's really nice. So it's, it's super accessible. Yeah. And I guess, speaking of accessibility, <laughs> why don't we talk a little bit about what you are passionate about, which is web accessibility. And I'd like to touch on before we get into that is kind of preface with something that I believe that I see a lot of people saying, or at least I hear some people saying that you know, web accessibility is a concept based on things like, you know, people that are visually impaired or can't hear, but there's so much more to that. And I think in this day and age, I don't know how we're mixing that up with every kind of level of accessibility. It's, it's not just about those kind of things. It's about, you know, I could be a new parent and I have my baby in my arm and I am now I have one hand to, uh, to interface my technology. So that's, that's accessibility. There, there's all kinds of level. I could be uh, very sensitive to motion. So if somebody puts up some kind of crazy effects or some weird parallax thing that's from, you know, three years ago and I go, whoa, like mm -hmm. that's, that's also an issue about accessibility. Do you mind if we kind of jump into some of those things, maybe the things that people don't really think about when they hear web accessibility? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're right that it's, it's not just like, oh, do you have a disability or not? There's a lot of impairments and there's like uh, permanent impairments, you know, like very obvious ones, like needing a wheelchair, like maybe you don't have um, 
of working arms, you know, uh, but then there's also like temporary ones, like maybe you have a cast or, um, you know, maybe you are holding a baby in your hands, or maybe you're in a very busy, loud place. So you can't use your like headphones to like clearly listen to the sound. So you need, you know, the captions. Um, so there's a lot of different situations and it doesn't necessarily have to be that you have a disability um, to use and appreciate accessible tools. Um, you know, that being said, um, a lot, you know, I, I think that just thinking about accessibility improves the experience for absolutely all users. Like I often navigate all my websites with just my keyboard because I, I just find it faster. Um, so for me, even though I don't have a disability, it's very frustrating to, you know, come, come into contact with some websites that don't allow me to do that. Or like they force me to go, you know, over use my mouse or like try to find things a different way. Um, so I think it's just, for everyone, it improves that experience. Yeah, even if you're just trying to do like tab through things and the tab order is like, what what is going on? Like, right. you know, that, that might be an inconvenience for me, but it might be um, very difficult for someone else to be able to navigate if they're uh, navigating a application, website, what have you with just a keyboard and no mouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of the points that you are really passionate about within web accessibility, application accessibility, what have you, that, um, that, that you do discuss? Well, I think it's, um, I think one of the main issues that I see over and over, it's kind of like, um, I don't think that it, developers, is not, they don't think about accessibility. I just think that they're not aware of like the issues that like doing something a certain way can bring to a lot of users. Um, so I think what I try to always bring awareness of is like, hey, like put your mouse away and try to do this with keyboard only because like you might not understand that by creating all your what look like buttons into divs, it, it yes, it looks the same, but it, it behaves very differently for keyboard users. Like, and even if you create it, okay, now it's tabable, but can you press enter on it? Can, can people submit stuff on it? Can, you know, like do the actions work? Um, even within forms, like if you don't connect things the right way, like if you press enter, like it's not gonna submit the form, you know? Um, so there's like a lot of issues, like, and it's very um, tiny changes that like improve any site, like a lot. Yeah, Basically, like if, if oh, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, well, one of my one of my annoyances is when you look at input fields and they have the border color pretty much the same color as the background because aesthetically <laughs> it, it makes it all blend. You don't see all these borders all the place, but you can't see where the form the form element yeah. is. Kind of important. Yeah, or a button not looking like a button and looking you know like something that's not a button. <laughs> Or on the other end, when, yeah, when, yeah. You, when you can't see doing things where if you, um, uh, example, like if you're creating a checkbox and you don't, or a select box and, uh, and you don't use an actual select or a check and you're using a div to create these things. Yeah. And then when you go into the inspector and you look at the uh, accessibility tab, it doesn't show up as anything. You mm -hmm. should start adding these aerial um uh, uh, you know, uh, items in there, you know, communicate the roles of things and what have you. And you could see maybe things start to pop up, but that's, you know, some things are just for the screen reader and some things aren't, uh, don't actually become ac accessible uh, yeah. in a way of interfacing it. What's, yeah. what's, what's one of the ones that grind your, your uh, teeth when you see, when you come across on a website and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> Well, I think definitely is the outline none. <laughs> and I think anyone who works on accessibility will tell you because it's something that you went out of your way to remove. <laughs> it comes for free already. Um, so to I, I understand the argument that, you know, it's a design thing, but um, if you're going to remove it, substitute it with something else that matches your design, um, definitely never remove it. And then I do want to kind of go on to um, what you were saying about the accessibility tab. And um, when you write HTML, right, um, that's it creates the DOM and the DOM is read by the browsers. Uh, but assistive technologies don't just read the DOM from that. It, it creates an accessibility tree and it grabs certain elements and it kind of generates like what each of those elements mean. And then it creates its own tree 
called the accessibility tree. And that's what um, users who are using assistive technology will navigate through. And that's why um, when you use things like divs instead of buttons or input fields with the wrong things, uh, it won't be translated correctly to that accessibility tree. And therefore a lot of elements will be missing and you can't tap through certain things and you can't um, emit certain functions because it just does not exist there. You're going to have to go back and fix these things once it goes through testing. So you might as well do it right the first time. I think one of the things we have to think about is, you know, the affordances of of things. Like when we, one of the examples I looked at on um, some of the earlier accessibility um, guides where they would talk about affordances of like, you know, you know what a button looks like and because a button kind of looks like a button in real life and a button there, or you know how to interface a teapot because there's a handle, there's a lid, there's a spout. But with some of these things, you can't take some of these affordances for granted. I think one of the ways that we could help mitigate this is if, you know, because we always talk about that, uh, you know, sometimes we just don't think about these things. So one of the ways to mitigate that is possibly to put a step inside of your scope where you, you do um, delegate the time for the research for accessibility. Mm -hmm. And that will help um, circumvent any of these issues that you'll have down the road when you get to the end of the project. If, if that's something that you set the time aside to, you know what, at, in this, this, uh, this run, you know, in, in this sprint, we're gonna just talk about accessibility and we have a sprint about that and we identify issues, we identify what needs to happen and we think about all the different kind of users that might interface with what we're building. And then we think about uh, the people that we didn't even think about, you know, there's, there's tons of things to think about, but if you, you delegate that time to do that, it will happen, I promise you. But if you don't and you just leave it up to, well, we'll figure it out along the way, it's it's probably going to go through the cracks. Yeah, absolutely. And even then, um, I have a lot of developers who are like, well, I, I'm really trying to find this answer to like meet this standard, but how do you do it in the code? Like, where do I find this? And there's so many contradicting things and like articles about it. So um, even even then it can be very confusing. Like even if you're willing to do the work, you know, you're spending time on this. Um, so I definitely think that even though accessibility, I feel like it's getting more and more traction every day. Um, I feel like it's something that is still growing and it still um, can be better documented. And um, we could we could definitely do better with better resources. Um, and hopefully we'll just kind of keep, keep on that path. <laughs> and I almost wonder if it should, I mean, I feel like it's sort of headed in that direction. I remember when, uh, it was mobile first, you know, mobile first, mobile first. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I feel like it should just be instead of mobile first, just be accessibility first. And that would include yeah. mobile because yeah. you want it to, <laughs> to be responsive and, and load on the, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how it, it's weird. Cause I, I think there is that one we, Frederick mentioned it early on. There's that focus that all the scope of what is accessible is oh, we need to make sure, you know, the contrast and colorblind and, uh, you know, think, things towards people who have, you know, impairments and disabilities as opposed to just generally, let's just make this so it functions well and for everyone and better for everyone. Why, why not? I mean, it's just, it's mm -hmm. common sense to me. I don't really understand. I understand it takes ban like bandwidth that, you know, people are moving fast, but yeah. But I think it goes back yeah. to making sure that you set aside some time to actually address these things rather mm -hmm. than saying, we'll, we'll figure it out later. Yeah, it are, builds up. <laughs> are there any statistics that you know of as far as, um, say, an e-commerce site that becomes accessible where uh, percentage increase in profit or, or any, any number dropping that you can think of offhand? Not like that. And I, I also would say it really depends on the business and um, yes. what kind of company it is. Like if they're doing business with other companies, then of course, like the world of who they can do business with opens up because now they can provide accessible tooling for companies that have, you know, government grants or anything like that, that require those um, standards. Yeah, absolutely. And we should talk about legal issues that will come from this and do come from this. Like um, I have in our notes, 
there was a legal issue with uh, someone trying to interface a website from Beyonce. And it was, it was one of those things that got, you know, a, a lot of uh, eyes on it because it was Beyonce. But there was a user that was trying to interface this website and they couldn't because it was solely geared for visual users. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously not her, but the entity of her, her, her people or what have you had an issue. And I believe the, the user actually won the case uh, with the help of the uh, ADA. Um, do, do you mind touching on some of those points, like what companies need to think about and why it's so important for their business? Well, well, of course, there's like a lot of legal issues now. And I feel like that's driving a lot more companies to kind of be reactive about it. Um, yeah. But I think that um, outside of that, like that, that is kind of like a good thing that is getting a lot of traction because more companies are starting to realize and pay a little bit more attention that it is important. But like, just on like a personal ne level, right? Like if, if, if half of your users couldn't use something because it was just giving them a terrible user experience, like why wouldn't you do something about it? Especially like if um, like HTML as a language has created the tools for you to semantically do things correctly. Like somebody spent the time thinking about this and doing this so that it worked for all these technologies. Like you can take the time and just learn it and learn to do things correctly. And um, it will improve the experience for so many people. And then, you know, you as a company will get so many uh, loyal customers and followers and just improve with time and then there's so many like there's like people talk about disabilities but like there's also like a huge growing um, population of older people that are going to need this accessible tools and we're all going to get there someday and we're all going to be benefiting from those accessibility features um, so why not start now right yeah, and Domino, just Domino's was another recent one as well, mm -hmm. just to point out that. I mean, it's, I'm seeing it more and more um, out there, and I, I'm hoping it's headed down the direction where it's kind of like how businesses have to have uh, ramps or, or elevators, or and they have to have the parking. Like, you just have to have um, these specific requirements. But what would be the minimum? Like, say I'm a business, I, I, come, to, I come to you after hearing your talk, I'm like, we're where can I go to find out like the minimum amount of requirements or like, what would you suggest as the minimum amount of requirements? Well, there's like, um, there's like different levels of uh, accessibility standards. Um, like WCAG has like um, the A, then double A and triple A. And of course you always want to shoot for triple A, which um, kind of uh, covers all of the standards and everything that you could do to um, help with all the assistive technology and what they support. Um, but then there's certain applications that can't ever get there. Um, so I would say like at least do double A standard um, and just do your research and try to meet that and you use your testing if you have to, um, if you don't have anybody um, who knows about this topic in your companies, like find contractors that can at least educate your engineers and where they can find this information themselves. Yeah, it's important to think about this, not just because, uh, you know, you could get sued and so you want to be reactive, but you should really be proactive. I think one of the things that you touched on that a lot of people find value is companies that are doing the right thing, where maybe the thinking 10, uh, 15, 20 years ago, brands were really the thing and people trusted brands, but people are more focusing on what companies do the, and the, the people behind these companies. You know, you like IBM used to open up everything where they talked about that they had been in business for X amount of years and, well, you could trust us. But a lot of millennials look at that and say, you know what, they're, they're, they're an old company. They are probably not um, used to change. So how, how are they going to be, um, be able to pivot on things like this? But if you, if you're doing the right thing, you're going to get people that are going to align with you. We see it in so many companies nowadays where they do this, that, or the other thing. And people go, yeah, I'm going to get on board with that. And I'm going to, I'm going to help out those people by voting for them by making a purchase or, you know what, I'm not going to buy this product because Monsanto's, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. There, there's so many ways that you could think about that. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, there was even an article that was saying that none of the candidates for the elections, none of their ex the websites were accessible. Oh, and so that's wow. a big deal. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's a that's a big miss, you know. Yeah, there's there's yeah, I'm, I'm just shocked by that there. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to be voting that cannot access these websites. So what do you, what are you trying to do? Are you are they them meaning are they trying to send a message or is it blatant disregard for the obvious? Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a mix of uh, disregard and just straight up ignorance. Uh, but also, that's really surprising. I'm curious if um, I know Obama during his he had a map pretty big um like tech presence in his i'm wondering how accessible his was if, oh that's interesting i would like to check that out <laughs> yeah, same with same with hillary's wasn't um did, who did what was her name mina yes mina i, I imagine her i i hope so anyway that mina made it accessible. <laughs> i'm sure she did yeah the pantsuit um yeah. what was it called yeah patterns oh uh, yeah i'm sure you know the thing about obama is he always and we don't go too political in this podcast but i'm sure <laughs> that's the gist of where we're, we're just going talking about we're just talking about the websites yeah but but <laughs> obama is one of those uh, intelligent human beings that always surrounds himself with smart people and people that are a lot smarter than him as a smart human being does he's an amazing man and knows what he's doing and i'm sure he had the right people um but again you know, we're not talking politics. I think, um, <laughs> I think we could, uh, it, w it would be fair if we talk about tools as well. Um, I think a, many people don't realize that there's a screen reader that just comes with your Mac, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just command F5 and you turn it on, guys. <laughs> it's great. Command F5. We'll put that in the show notes. Brian got it. Yep. Command F5. And you can also turn it off like that in case you get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind telling us what it is and how, how someone would use that? Sure. So if you're in a Mac and you want to start experimenting with your applications, you can just do command F5 and it'll turn on the screen reader. And you can use your tab key to kind of navigate through all the tabbable elements in your application, shift tab to kind of go back. Um, and then depending on what screen reader you're using, you have the different shortcuts. Um, if you're on a Mac, you can open up your rotor tool, which I believe it's command option U um, or option command U. I always have to do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then you can kind of see like uh, the landmarks of your application, which are kind of sections that you can create semantically and you can kind of navigate through things a little bit quicker so that you can have things like a header or a nav Maybe. bar yeah, the main content of your page or the footer. So like if you um, navigate to a website and you know exactly what section you want to go to, you can kind of go to it like that. Um, and then if you're using a Windows machine, you have NVDA for free. Um, so it's NVDA and you could just download it and it kind of works very similar to voiceover. You could just turn it on. And I think for that one, you can actually skip through certain headers. Um, so they each have like different types of shortcuts and I could um, provide the link so that we could put it in the description. But Oh yeah, if you could put it in the show notes, that would be great. But yeah, yeah it's totally. important to do those things because what if you have some kind of big website that has a like a, a some kind of crazy mega menu or something, I don't know. And um, you want to provide some kind of way for people to go to the role of main and just go right into main. That I don't want the, that my user to have to read through the navigation each time to get to main. To get to yeah, the, absolutely. Oh, I do. And, um, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but but also, I would even suggest trying to uh, test your application, especially like if you're uh, have a lot of users, to test them with multiple um, screen readers and multiple browsers, because there are certain screen readers that have support for different things, and they work better with certain browsers. Um, if you want to kind of try another one, there's Chrome has an extension for one called. Uh, voice uh, Chromebox, I believe. Um, and that's that one's pretty good. Just basic navigation, but it kind of helps you see things a little bit different from a screen reader perspective. What about yeah. uh, Firefox? Anything there? I haven't um, looked at too many of their extensions. <laughs> gotcha. 
but they do have like um, a lot of the extensions for like tools and like color simulators that exist in Chrome are the exact same in Firefox. Yeah, I, I really like, um, I, I used it for a while and I've since switched, uh, well, just stopped using that and using some built-in stuff, but Funkify is a really cool extension too. It, it allows you to even simulate um, like the cursor cursor moving from someone who might have difficulty, you know, with motion and it mm. like cataracts and stuff, which is, was really, is really amazing. Um, and, you know, we have all the, it like, gets back to what we were talking about earlier. We have all these tools. There's no reason you can't do it because we have the capabilities just put in the time. Um, what are some other, are there any built in, um, I know we talked about the accessibility tab. Um, what else is out there and similar to that? Yeah, so you could actually run free audits uh, for accessibility on your site. So again, if you're in Chrome, there's like a, in your dev tools, there's a audits tab. And then you could test things like SEOs and progressive web app. Um, and you could choose one for accessibility. And then that will run, um, you know, a light audit. I think it will catch like maybe 30% of any problems, but it will provide you with a lot of information on how to fix uh, a couple things in your application that you might not know how to fix. Like if you have color contrasting issues, they'll provide a couple of articles to kind of like, hey, this is how you can fix it. Um, and then they'll do that for like a couple of things, but they do tell you like, hey, there's a couple of things that you do have to check by hand, like making sure that um, anything that's tabbable, it's in a logical order in your application. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of things that they will just not test for that you have to do by hand. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I, I, as you were talking about, I looked it up. I was like, oh, nice. They even have a really cool illustration there. So yeah. people should go look and see what that illustration looks like and then, then use it. <laughs> Wasn't Lighthouse, am I thinking, saying that right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, that's the, what is built into Chrome now. It's a Lighthouse tool. Oh, really? That's oh. Awesome. That's so cool. Well, you know, you we should probably talk a little bit about Vue uh, as well, because that's that's what you use, and you have a a talk with Vue and web accessibility. Maybe we could discuss some of the advantages that kind of come with Vue and accessibility, or or the things that we could do. Do, do you mind kind of discussing some of that talk? Obviously, we don't want to give away your talk, but. <laughs> You guys should go watch it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's really good. I really like using Vue and kind of breaking everything down into components and being able to pass certain things. And once you kind of build a an accessible component, then you don't really have to think about it twice. You could just reuse it over and over without having to, you know, rebuild it from scratch. Um, so it's kind of like build it really well the first time and then just keep reusing it. Um, so I really, really like that. But, you know, along with any like sing single page application comes like a lot of accessibility hurdles. <laughs> so like, um, you know, announcing new content being loaded since it's not really changing the URL, I guess. Um, it's not really telling assistive technologies that like, hey, this new page has loaded or um, new modal has loaded on top of this because it's all kind of like component. Um, so there's like a, a couple of tricks here and there that you can use. There's um, this um, extension or plugin called View Announcer, uh, and that's been pretty good. You could like set um, different uh, data inside your inside your router, and you could say like, "Hey, announce this for this route," and then you could just kind of announce it that way. Or you could have customizable um, messages in each route, and it's really really good. View announcer is that what you said? Yeah, that's cool. So it's uh, so it's you just install. Oh, that's an npm package. That's cool. Well, how did how does it actually interface? Is it just? Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. I'm, I'm answering my question <laughs> as as by looking it up. And we'll, yeah. have a, we'll have a link to that. Well, um, are what uh what do you know if there's anything similar for um. Uh, React or any uh, other uh, frameworks offhand? I, I I haven't played too much with React, but I every time I look, there's a lot of documentation for React and um, how to get around these issues. Cool. And uh, I I'm actually yep, that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you have? Um, I have a a husky. <laughs> oh really? Oh, does it have the uh, the bright blue husky eyes? Oh yeah. 
he does and all the fur and hair flying around everywhere that comes along with it <laughs> i love huskies <laughs> yeah they're beautiful do you mind if we um jump into a little bit more about you i i really like to uh you know we we, we enjoy to dive into what drives people and uh you know also what they do as far as um taking a break from the screen and what maybe their uh, personal lives are like. And I was reading that you were really into the outdoors and uh, I'm looking at my notes here. It says that you're, you're into things like hiking, kayaking, surfing, uh, zip lining. Is, is, is that the kind of stuff that you always kind of been into? Oh my gosh. Yes. Always, always. Um, unfortunately, I don't get to do them as much now since um, I guess my diagnosis uh, causes a lot of mobility issues. So when I am feeling up for it, I do it, <laughs> but not as often as I would like. Um, I honestly <laughs> don't spend too much time off the screen. <laughs> um, oh no. No, I know, but I like it. Um, I, I kind of like keeping myself busy and just always have a project going on. Um, so like right now I'm writing a, um, web accessibility, uh, course for view school. So check oh, it out. Nice. Good so we'll go you. over, awesome. yeah, it will go over a lot of the issues, um, that, uh, single page applications have, and a lot of kind of like the guidelines on how to kind of approach a big application and fix it slowly and how to prioritize certain issues of an application. So I'm excitedly doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm curious too. I, I've, I've been looking around your surroundings behind you. Is your wall, is there a pattern painted on your wall or is that just shadow? Because it, it looks like a pattern. No, yeah, it is a pattern. It's like a Chevron pattern. No, um, cool. yeah, when we cool. moved in, this became like my craft room because I'm really into crafts. And um, we did this at like 12 in, at, at night, just like, yep, let's paint the, <laughs> the wall. Um, you know, so speaking of, of which, and I think you've been playing a joke on us because I keep seeing <laughs> that bear in the background move, <laughs> moving. Oh, that, bear. that foot. Uh, yeah, the oh, foot yeah. behind the plant. It's, it keeps moving. It's, um, that one of those Facebook that, links? it's like one of those Costco bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, it looks like it's going to get up any minute and be like, Whoa. oh my God, it's right behind you. I do get, I do sit down there and like work. <laughs> I know, it looks like it'd be very comfortable. Yeah, I bring my all my chargers and it's it's nice space, but <laughs> he's he's very comfy. Yeah, and she and she has lots of plants too, which I really, really like that. That's great. We're we get to getting to see and we're critiquing her workspace and yeah. <laughs> for our audio listeners, please go back and actually watch the episode. There's a lot of context. Yeah. <laughs> And then I have um, some crochet projects around. Like, yeah, did you make that behind you, the dog? Yeah, or I think it's a dog. It, it, it's a bunny. <laughs> a bunny. Oh, it's hard to tell. It's fine. It's a bunny. And then I made like a rug. <laughs> and yeah. then oh, you made that rug? Yeah, I made a rug. I, um, oh, that is awesome. Like I said, I really liked having projects just always going on. <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's pretty uh, incredible. That's big. I love it. Too. How big is soothing. that? Um, well, like I can lay down on it and it's like my height. So wow. five, four. Ooh, that is big. That's really impressive. Yeah, I'm big. very, I'm very impressed. <laughs> can we make, I would like one in uh, red, please. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Your first order. <laughs> <laughs> and boom, a new project. A new <laughs> yeah. <on> Amazon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll buy you one. <laughs> You'll buy one. That's not the same thing at all. <laughs> I was going to say, we're getting uh, pretty close to the end. We should jump into our lightning round. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, and what the lightning round is, is we basically ask you a, a bunch of questions really rapidly. And you have to, it's like you answer it, and then we move to the next question. Uh, and you know, that's pretty much uh, our lightning <laughs> round. <laughs> I, I am not nervous for this at all. Yeah. <laughs> As you shouldn't be, honestly. Right. <laughs> but there are really difficult questions. <laughs> you, you know calculus, right? Yeah, actually. <laughs> uh, that's great. Great answer. Great answer. Yeah. <laughs> you can teach us. Uh, I'll All go right, first. Start off. Where do you not mind waiting? Waiting? Oh, man, nowhere. I don't like waiting. 
<laughs> like I'm thinking about like sitting in my car in traffic in the sun. Like that's no, no worse feeling than that. <laughs> Second question. What's the worst place that you hate to wait? Airport. What chore do you absolutely hate doing? The dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite video game ever? ever. Ocarina of Time. Ooh, <gasps> yeah. Firefox or Chrome? Chrome. You come home. It's late at night. It's one in the morning. <laughs> you open your front door. There's a ghost. What do you do? Close the door. <laughs> <laughs> well said. You're okay. You're you're in the circus. Would you rather be the person with their head inside the lion's mouth or get shot out of the cannon? Oh, get shot out of the cannon. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite anime? Um, Death Note. Ooh, applause. Well <laughs> what if anything have you ever regifted? Regifted. <laughs> probably coasters <laughs> <The> coasters <laughs> what's your favorite drink at starbucks i don't drink starbucks <laughs> do you drink coffee oh sorry that's no a- i don't <laughs> <laughs> when was the what was the uh, you, we probably already know the answer to this but what's the last injury you had that required you to see a doctor oh yeah like everything, <laughs> <laughs> everything? Okay. just living <laughs> favorite cheese oh um Smoke Gouda. Ooh, good one. Ooh, Gouda, what, good. What's the uh, last thing you bought online? Uh, pins for my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Hey, didn't you wear that shirt the day after yesterday? No. <laughs> nice. Just checking. What, what fact amazes you every time you think of it? Oh my God. I don't know what it is, but I just thought about um, kangaroos. All right. (laughs) What happens to a frog when his car breaks down? Mm -mm. Nope. I hate frogs. (laughs) I would just like. It's toad. (laughs) Nice. Nice. (laughs) See? what, What do you miss most about being a kid? Oh my gosh. Like, being able to climb on things and not be weird. Oh, that's, yeah. that's a good one. If you could not be in front of a computer for the rest of your life, what would you be doing professionally? Behavior analysis. <laughs> sunshine or rain? Oh, sunshine. Favorite band? Nirvana. <laughs> Why did you laugh? That's fine. Okay. <laughs> you can't be ashamed of that. Yeah. Uh, favorite cereal? Lucky Charms. Yeah. I don't even need Lucky Charms. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> oh, she does. She's not admitting. She just doesn't want to admit it. Make sure everyone, you send her some Lucky Charms because she loves them. She's going to start eating them. Um, what's your favorite thing? And I know it sounds silly, but honestly, what's your favorite thing about yourself? Hmm. I feel like I laugh a lot and I know that's annoying for some people, but I'm just happy. So (laughs) I love that. That's great. Good answer. Make your perfect sandwich. What is it? Oh, okay. So lettuce and mayo and probably turkey and then pepper and olive oil and toasted. Mm. Oh man, you just made me so hungry. (laughs) (laughs) You made me so hungry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's those lucky, lucky charms. charms. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx, luck of the Irish. By the way, I just set my iPhone to the Irish voice and I love it. Uh, aside, I'm digressing. What is a technology that you're really excited about that you're not currently involved with? Um, augmented technology, like technology and um i just went to a meetup and then there was like a demo and this guy brought like his headsets and he was just kind of like showing us all this thing and kind of where the future is headed and i was like wow like i'm nowhere there but i would love to be in that space when that all happens that's so cool what's the exact opposite to that what's the technology that's coming there like oh god oh man i don't know i i couldn't answer that (laughs) favorite cartoon as a kid 
Huh. I uh, probably like Powerpuff Girls. That's fair. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever dyed your hair a uh, weird color? Well, yeah, actually. So before I got sick and couldn't dye it anymore, I would always have it like red. So that's something I miss, just like, having red hair. Like the color of your shirt red? Not or? this, not this red, it's like red. like in but between this and this. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's red though, kind of. It's like auburn. Yeah, like the bottom kind of like has some left, but I mostly cut it off. <laughs> Out of all the stuff we discussed today, what else brings you happiness? What do you enjoy? Um family i really enjoy spending time with my family and just quality time with friends and just community stuff do, do you like naps i i wish i had an easier time taking naps <laughs> than my husband does <laughs> this oh, might not he... be go ahead Brian. oh i was just gonna say is he like a zonk out type that he's like oh, i want a nap he's like okay well, he he has a really easy time just doing that. Like we'll be in the couch like, okay, now I'm going to take a nap. And then he's done. Oh, like he takes a nap. Nice. Like to me, it's like an hour, two hours went by. I'm like, well, like I might as well not take a nap now. Like, so. <laughs> like yeah, I could do the same thing. I, yeah, I fall down I an cannot, hour. I can't. Ugh. Let me ask you this. And this, this might not be a rapid question, but it's, I think it's a good question. What would you like to achieve professionally within the next 10 years? I guess um, making a difference in accessibility space and like just, I don't know, maybe even just creating like an, a way that developers can do things easier. Like even just like if it's in the form of documentation or just like a resource that kind of like, hey, like <laughs> we have, you know, combine all the articles and found, you know, the contradictory things. And here's like the actual answer for everything and just one place to look. And, you know, so it's not so difficult. <laughs> one place to look. <laughs> like yeah, that. which is not, <laughs> it sounds impossible. <laughs> it, it, it does, but no, that's a, that's a nice reality. I like that. Back to kooky question. Would you rather be able to copy and paste in real life or undo? Copy and paste. It would make cooking a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> you can make one cookie. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you see a big challenge in the technology of today that impedes us from successfully providing better solutions for web accessibility? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, I, I really wonder, like, where a, a lot of technology is heading, even like this um, augmented reality stuff. It's like, I, like, I, I see a lot of negatives, like, where, like, it's going to take so mm. much longer for people to be able to, like, use those tools in a certain way with, like, you know, it's like a whole new hurdle that developers have to kind of approach. And like, now there's has to be new standards for this. But at the same time, it's like, um, even as I was watching this presentation that I told you guys about, I couldn't be like help thinking about like, when I was better in being able to just kind of put myself in a world where I could have gone running or like, you know, where I could have like gone on a hike or um, kind of like this, the same thing as Avatar, you know, where that guy like was able yeah. to kind of use something oh, like yeah. as a body and then just be able to run. Like, that's amazing. So like, I feel like that, that could totally be the case for, for where this is headed after we kind of jump over that hurdle and how to make these tools accessible. Yeah, that, that, um, we're just it's losing our lightning round, but that actually kind of scares me in a way because I almost wonder <laughs> what would happen. I mean, imagine what was that one movie with <sighs> Ready Player One? <laughs> no, I mean, that, yeah, that Minority uh, Report. No, mm. the one where everyone has a body and they just kind of plug in. And, uh, I think there's, it was an iRobot. Oh, no, no, like no. Uh, I know which one you're talking about. Same era. Ridiculous. Yeah, Bruce Wall. A uh, surrogate. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, like a world like that where we just—I uh, mean—we lose touch with 
um, each other by distant by you know creating this artificial. I and mean, we already are there with like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And we're pretty much our androids. We have this yeah, yeah. really solid relationship with our phone. No matter what you do, it's you're going to pick it up and look, you feel that tweak. And a lot of people yeah. have those even phantom notifications where oh, yeah. your phone's in your watch. Even, yeah, yes. you, like you don't have it in your pocket or you're not even wearing a watch and you feel like a booze it. Like, cause, because your brain is getting that little hit. And it's like yeah. notifications. And you're like, oh yeah, look. And oh, I don't have a watch. I like to on. think I'm that I'm psychically it. connected to it. And <laughs> it, it's like, it actually did go off. And I just yeah, like- You would like to think that, but it's, it's more in reality, like that movie, They <laughs> Live, where you put on the glasses and you see the signs that say obey. That's that's, that's kind of the way we're going. It's it's yeah. it's slightly scary, but who, yeah. who knows? Maybe, maybe it's going to be a great thing. All. All we know for sure is that AI will get to the point where it's going to be completely autonomous and it will not re- require us. And it's going to either make us its pet, live with us in harmony, or just see mm-hmm. us as kind of ants that are in the way that need to be squashed. Yeah. Hooray! Um, well, that was a Oh, yeah. A lot to look <laughs> forward to. <laughs> that was very, that was cheerful, Frederick. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Wait, <laughs> I have said- to say. Go ahead. I was reading an article and it actually was comparing the way that adults feel um, when they lose their phone is the same than a kid feels when they lose like their teddy bear. So it's like we are so attached to it that we behave like little kids losing a toy. So Wow. There's like an emotional like love or something there. Well, people panic, like, like straight up panic. And I, I mean, I know part of it is also the monetary value of it because it's not exactly <laughs> easy to replace. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, I left it at home. We've got to turn around. I'm like, I think I have one. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> what if somebody's calling? Ah! <laughs> That's funny. Well, we are at the end of the show, um, and uh, man, we we talked about a lot of things, and I'm so happy that yeah. we got to speak to you again uh, when we uh, we talked to you the first time at um, the ViewConf, and uh, we had some trouble with the Wi-Fi there. But um, what? First off, let me ask: What's the best way people could get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you? What's your website? If you have a website, what's your Twitter handle and all that? Yeah, so the easiest way would be my Twitter, and it could be at Maria Lamardo so just first and last name and you could reach out to me there perfect and 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 Maria the last question we'd love to ask is do you have any final words of wisdom anything you like to communicate to the audience that you uh, would like to share yeah accessibility is important for everyone not just a group of people and it will impact all of us well said just, Brian, just, do you have anything? Just once I want someone to be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to <laughs> share. <laughs> That'd be great. So future li- future uh, person on the show, do that. I'll laugh. <laughs> Please <laughs> well, do. But no, it was fantastic having you on the show. And I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And please subscribe. As Brian said, click the little notification bell and you'll get notifications when we have a a new show going live. And uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Take care, everyone. See ya. Uh, And hold on.